All right, here we have the 85 inch QN90C from Samsung. Last year, the QN90B was like my favorite 4K QLED TV of the year. So why don't we check out this and see if it's even better this year. But first, let's show them how we got the TV up here. So let's roll that footage from the unboxing. So we have the huge 85 inch TV box. And the first thing we have to do is cut the straps on top that hold it together in order to open the top and get at the accessories. There's a quick setup guide if it's your first time setting up a TV, along with a bag of goodies, including the power cord and the remote. There's also the lighter part of the stand up in the top, but that's about it. So first we have to take the box apart, which requires pulling the four tabs on the side and separating the front and the back pieces. Much easier than lifting it over the top and risk your TV falling forward. I've never done that before. But seriously, this is kind of a two person job because it does become a little bit unstable. You're gonna take some of the styrofoam and the center big bubble wrap piece off. <laughs> but once you take that heavy plate out of the bottom, it gets pretty tippy. So then there's actually instructions on the back of the TV that show you how to take the box apart, so to speak, to get the stand on. So you basically just pick up the piece of styrofoam on the center back, and then you can kick out the front piece, allowing you to access where the stand needs to go. So on the stand, on the one piece, you're going to have to take off the back plate. Now I've got these beautiful nails, so I made Brandon handle that. And then you're going to screw the base plate into the back plate. It's a little bit difficult here, so my nice dainty hands worked way better than Brandon's big old meat sticks. So 30 minutes later, after Jen got those four screws in, we were able to connect it to the back of the TV, put the other four screws in, and once we took the two pieces of styrofoam off the ends, all the weight was on the stand, and you can see it wobbles a little bit, but it's a pretty solid stand overall. So now all we have to do is move our Ikea Besta stand into place, pop the TV up on there, and now on to my favorite part, pulling the plastic. Okay, are you ready? <laughs> I'm super ready, so excited, my favorite. I'm not even on either camera. I don't care. Your mind to do with what I wish. They don't stick to you. They stick to me. All right. These are mine. <laughs> Caesar, get him. Yeah, now we're both just going to get him. Oh. <laughs> okay, well, that was fun. Let's flip her over and show the ports. All right, let's do it. All right, so the back plasticky feeling here, not super premium looking. We do have a 600 by 400 millimeter Visa pattern. Pretty standard there. It's a little higher than most other TVs. And then over here, we have USB ports you can connect. And then you have your HDMI 4, HDMI 2.1. So all four of these can gain 4K 120 with the eARC being the one that you connect, you know, your sound bar or your system to so you can get sound out to it. And then you have your LAN or your wired internet and then X-Link. And then you have the ATSC 3.0 tuner, which gets you 4K tuner channels and Dolby Atmos and all those things in the future. So pretty straightforward, pretty similar to last year on the back here. A couple of cool speaker ports and things, but you know, pretty basic. One thing missing on this QN90B, which the QN95B and 8K and even the QD OLEDs have, is it does not have the one connect box. So you actually have the HDMI ports, no one wire, you don't put the one connect box back here. So depending on if you like that or not, this one's more suitable for wall mounting with the HDMI is already up on the wall. Whereas the 8Ks and all that and the, the frame and all those other ones uh, just have the one wire that connects and then you can put all your stuff down in the cabinet. So uh, just, you know, differences between the TVs. Fair enough. Let's check out that remote. Okay, there we go. We have the Samsung Solar Cell Remote. This remote has gotten smaller and smaller every year. You got the power button and now you have, you know, sort of a general function button at the top instead of an input, microphone, all the kind of stuff, a directional pad in the middle. It does still have that home button nicely located, of course, with the U-turn uh, button or go back button. 
I like that they have the volume up and down, channel up and down buttons that you can feel. Then you have some common apps that we use down at the bottom. And of course, on the back, it has the big solar panel that you can use to get light for power. And at the bottom, it also has the USB-C port. All right, enough about the remote. We gotta turn this TV on so we can show you some cool content, see how the HDR looks on this amazing TV. A few tests that are really important to see if it's even better than last year's. And then of course, at the end, my buying advice. So stick around for that. Why don't you fire it up, Jen? But first, I'd like to thank ShipStation for sponsoring this video. In a world where it seems like fast and free shipping has become the norm, it's becoming increasingly difficult for smaller e-commerce businesses to compete. That's where ShipStation comes in. With their competitive rates, you can lower your shipping costs, make returns easy, and keep your customers happy while saving time and money. ShipStation makes it easy to manage every order from one simple dashboard. You can automate shipping tasks, print shipping labels, and easily compare rates and delivery times to optimize every shipment. This is something that I would have loved to have when I was shipping TV mounts back in the day, one by one, which was such a tedious process that took way too much of our time on a daily basis. If you've ever created 50 or 100 individual shipping labels in a single day, there's no doubt you would sign up for ShipStation and never look back. ShipStation easily integrates everywhere you sell online, including Amazon, Etsy, eBay, Shopify, and more. So join the over 130,000 companies that have grown their e-commerce businesses with ShipStation and get up to 84% off USPS and UPS rates by going to ShipStation.com forward slash installer today to sign up for your free 60-day trial. That's ShipStation.com forward slash installer for your free 60-day trial today. All right, we have it all set up. TV seemed to set up faster than they did a few years ago, which is very nice. Able to jump right into it and show you the Tizen operating system. Now, I have already reviewed this on the S95C, which you can check out, but the OS in general is much quicker and more responsive than it was last year, which is one of the big complaints that has been fixed. So I like that. It has all kinds of content that you can check out, you know, all kinds of apps. I don't think there's a big issue there. Most TVs have most apps. It doesn't have HBO Max, which is one that I use. So a little disappointing there, but it does have these Samsung TV Plus channels too, which I'm a big fan of, being able to watch all kinds of content, even if you don't have cable. So you can go in here and pick all kinds of different genres, news and opinion, entertainment, crime, game shows, sports, etc. Of course, I always mention that one of the ones that I used to watch a lot was the Hell's Kitchen, of course, got a soft spot for this show. And again, looks pretty good for, you know, free channels. The resolution isn't terrible. I mean, it's as good as YouTube TV, more or less. And, you know, I pay $75 a month for that. So I think a lot of people would be happy with this if they don't have cable. If you're just a Netflix person or HBO Max or whatever, and you want to add this on, it's a great benefit to have from Samsung. Then, of course, besides the apps and the Samsung Plus, you also have a gaming tab where you can connect your different systems and also cloud game, which is cool and I'll talk about in a bit. And then you have ambient mode, which is sort of the backgrounds when you're not watching the TV. It's not exactly the same as getting a Samsung frame, but this TV's so much better than the Samsung frame if the art isn't your main reason for getting the TV and the actual TV is. I recommend getting this TV and utilizing the backgrounds that this comes with versus, you know, if you're more about the art, then you get the Samsung frame. The TV's not quite as good, but still pretty good. Both TVs pretty popular. And then of course you have this new multi-view function. I guess it was around last year, but cool that you can separate the TV in half. So you could have, you know, the Samsung Plus on one side and have YouTube videos on the other. I think what's cool is you can actually navigate within the frame now too. I don't know if you could do this when it came out first time, uh, but you know, I can sit here and navigate up and down in the YouTube. Then I can press exit and I can actually then move over to the other side and then I can navigate in there too. Then you can also mirror your phone as one of the two sources, which is pretty cool. So it's cool you have a lot of features a lot of people enjoyed picture in picture back in the day. It's back and it's pretty cool. But let's take that opportunity to go right into YouTube TV and check out some sports because, you know, you're probably watching news, sports, TV shows, things like that on your cable or YouTube TV like we use. So let's do that. So I watch a lot of sports and typically these Samsung high-end TVs look fantastic for it. And the QN90C is no different. Looks very sharp. You know, the colors look great. It's a bright screen, of course. I mean, at first we did have to set up a few things. The content did look a little grainy, but it ended up being that I just had it on something that was lower resolution. We turned it to more live sports center sports. 
and it looked fantastic. So again, sometimes it depends on what you're watching. I think in general, Samsung doesn't upscale quite as good if it's really bad or low resolution as some of the other TVs might. I think a Sony TV does maybe a little bit more there, but the quality of the source that you're using, of course, is gonna dictate how good it looks. And then we also had some motion issues. Right off the bat, typically the TVs look a little too herky-jerky for me. I think it's the de-blurring that I need to add. So I went into the picture clarity and put those settings down to custom mode and moved them both to the four range. Four on both the de-blurring and the de-judder make it so that I feel I don't get too much of the juddery motion, but not too much of what they call the soap opera effect where it looks like you're watching a soap opera. So those are the points that I like to have them at. You can adjust those as you see fit. But overall, it looks great. It looks great off angle. Samsung's normally great for off angle viewing. I think it looks good in general, no complaints here. Of course, we'll check out the blooming test, which I'm really excited to see how it looks off angle, how the blooming is, the light bleeding. But you know, watching this sort of content, this TV looks fantastic. Okay, so for watching HDR movies, we typically go to something like Disney Plus that has good quality HDR, we can see how animated movies look, how you know regular non-animated movies look. So we're gonna start with Luca, which I've you know displayed on many different TVs, kind of a benchmark. And it looks to me like this in general is a little bit dimmer than I remember it being on the QN90B last year. And so it kind of got me wondering if it's just the movie or if there was something wrong with the TV and HDR. And so I called my good friend Stop the FOMO to find out that Samsung has changed how they do their HDR a little bit this year. So Samsung has been criticized in years past by film purists who want the picture to be as accurate as possible. Normally they'll oversaturate their picture a bit. So this year, instead of just having an auto HDR where you have no choice, but to have it that more punchy way that Samsung likes to have it, you have two options, a static HDR tone mapping, and then you have an active. So the active is more like the traditional Samsung look, which I'm used to, and the static is more accurate. And this is filmmaker mode, so you'd want it to look as accurate as possible. So now if you watch this same scene where you have active on the left and you have the static tone mapping on the right, you can clearly see that there's a large difference. Again, it's up to you to decide if you want it more punchy like Samsung traditionally does or if you want it more like the filmmaker's intent. And the good thing is that Samsung has all kinds of ways to continue to brighten up the screen. So if you start out with it on static in the regular filmmaker mode, totally fine. You can pump up the brightness in many different ways by watching it in dynamic mode or adding tone mapping or even adding advanced contrast enhancer, all these things are to get the TV more punchy in HDR. Plenty of great ways to watch your TV. And the other elephant in the room is Dolby Vision or lack thereof for Samsung. They're not gonna get it this year, probably not gonna get it ever. They have their own HDR 10 plus. I think Samsung TVs look plenty bright, vibrant, punchy, great tone mapping without Dolby Vision. Some may disagree. If you want a TV with Dolby Vision, there's other brands to get. Samsung doesn't have it, plain and simple. So now that we've checked out the animated movies, let's go to some live action. Check out this scene from The Last Jedi. A pretty cool scene with HDR and widescreen where we can both check how bright the highlights are and how something like blooming is handled on a LED backlit TV. Now obviously it looks better because I do have it in filmmaker mode with that active tone mapping on so it's a little bit punchier here than it was when I had it on the static. But from straight on I really don't see any blooming around the widescreen area. I have not turned on any subtitles to check that out but in a lot of other TVs from a lot of different brands you'll see some light bleeding through in the top or the bottom widescreen bars. And even from a wide angle, I really don't notice much blooming. Again, a lot of other LED TVs have far more blooming. Samsung has done a really good job of implementing mini LED with these backlit TVs and the widescreen viewing angles. So I don't know, this QN90C looks pretty good, but we do need to check out a couple tests. So we'll start with that blooming test to see how it looks with a test pattern up before I give you guys my buying advice at the end. All right, when looking at this blooming test to see some of the light bleeding issues that TVs like this can have, it looks fairly good. I mean, this is the 85 inch version of the QN90C. So it is supposed to be a VA panel. Whereas I guess some of the other smaller versions may not be the VA, they may be an ADS type panel, which is a little bit different. And traditionally I've noticed more blooming on those sorts of panels than we would on a VA. So I can't say whether or not those smaller sizes would be good in this test but I'm noticing very similar results to last year with the QN90B. Another test we like to use is called the dirty screen effect test, where we check the uniformity of the panel to see if the light is coming through evenly. So you can watch the hockey player and see what's going on behind him and see if you notice any areas that look darker than the screen in general. 
I would say that this Samsung TV is sort of in the middle of where this test would be. It's not terrible. I don't see a ton of dirty screen, but it isn't great either. There are some small blotchy areas and maybe a little bit of vignetting around the corners. I do think the TVs from Samsung that don't have that very extreme anti-reflective coating on them typically fare better in this test, and I'm not sure if it's directly correlated, but I do think that this TV would be a pass. I think I would keep it. I don't think it's an issue that you'd notice on everyday content, but that's for you to decide. Now, that does make me think, I do wanna check out that anti-reflective coating test because if this has got a better uniformity, then maybe it doesn't have as good of anti-reflective coating. So let's check that out. So we have some regular SDR content back on and have some lights in the background to see if you notice the lights, if you notice you know, the anti-reflective rainbow layer that Samsung has had. And to be honest, it does not look like the anti-reflective coating is as good as I remember. Uh, you can definitely see these lights in the background easier. And I do not notice the big rainbow across the screen that Samsung was known for the last few years. So it's kind of back to being where it was when I had my KS8000 in 2017, where you kind of have a pretty good anti-reflective coating, something similar to what an OLED would be. Of course, this TV is brighter, so it's not as noticeable as it would be on an OLED TV. However, it doesn't have that rainbow effect. I like that. Kind of the best of both worlds. But enough about the testing. Let's get to some gaming footage quickly and then we're going to wrap up with some buying advice. So I'm not a huge gamer, but I'll just tell you the basics for this QN90C. It has a 144 hertz panel, so it can game 4K 120, which is what the PS5 and the Xbox Series X have. And then you can get a higher refresh rate if you're gaming on a PC. But to make it sweet and to the point, Fantastic gaming TV. Obviously it's bright and colorful and it has FreeSync, VRR, and all the fixings. You also have this really cool game bar that you can see all the different statistics at the bottom. So if you're playing different kind of picture modes, if you want the mini map on, if you have you know VRR on or what kind of frame rate you got, I really feel like it can add to your gaming experience by just kind of showing you what's going on. So in addition to gaming on your console and you know pulling up that cool game bar, this also does have cloud gaming, which we showed on the S95C. And it's pretty cool. It's pretty neat to have the ability to connect to your Xbox account and resume from where you last played. However, it was a little glitchy with regards to the speed and the bandwidth. You know, my internet at least made it seem a little glitchy and it wasn't up to par with playing the game on disc or on the actual hard drive. But my kids did say that when they cloud game on the actual consoles themselves, that they have some of the same issues. So it's a cool feature to have this cloud gaming, but maybe not something you're gonna buy this TV for. In general, I think Samsung TVs game fantastically. So really we just need to wrap the video up by talking about this TV and buying advice. When I bought this, it was $47.99 plus tax. So over $5,000 for this 85 inch. Very expensive. Of course, it will come down in price as the year goes on. And I think I would look to you know Amazon Prime Day or Black Friday where you can probably get this TV around $3,000, give or take. And there will be a model, the QN95C, which will be a little bit more expensive. I think it might be a little bit better, but this 85 inch QN90C is fantastic. Very similar to last year. So you could also go get the QN90B right now where you'd probably have a substantial savings over this. Really the only thing that I've noticed between the C and the B is that they have the new cloud gaming and also that static versus active HDR tone mapping. So really not that huge of deals when you're talking about saving a couple thousand dollars. So definitely check out the QN90B if it's still available, especially in the 85 inch size. And if you're still confused about which TV to get, we have a TV quiz on betheinstaller.com. The link is in the description below. But what you do is click on how big your room is, you know, what kind of content you're gonna be watching, if it's gonna be a bright or a dark room, and it'll spit out the best TVs for you to pick. You'll get a main option and then below it, there'll be some other options. And if you click on any of the TVs and buy it, it'll help support the channel. So I appreciate you going to be theinstaller.com and taking that TV quiz. And don't forget to check out the new S95C unboxing that we did here on the top. And on the bottom, we have the 97-inch G2. So check those videos out, and I'll see you on the next one.